Hello, my name is Mike Baker. I'm the Beef Cattle Extension Specialist with the Department of Animal Science at Cornell University. Today, we spent some time at the Wyoming County Fair. Thanks to some local 4-H'ers, we were able to use their animals to review what a finished animal looks like. And so today, we're going to be looking at finished and unfinished steers and heifers, both of beef breeds and some dairy crosses. Because knowing when an animal is finished is extremely important for the market because the price is dictated about quality and your consumers have a preference one way or the other. So getting the eyeball to be able to know when to, to pick them uh, is important. So hopefully today we'll bring out some points that will help you in this process. Just as all of us deposit fat differently, cattle are the same way. So it's not just looking at a single point, it's looking at all the points in aggregate. But the main ones that we want to look at is the tailhead fat. That is the deposits of fat on either side of the tailhead. Then we generally go to the brisket. The brisket needs to have some degree of, of fatness and we'll refer to looking like the size of a cantaloupe all the way down to the size of a grapefruit. Uh, the other areas would be along the, uh, the rib cage, uh, how smooth or how pointed that is. Across the hooks to pins, uh, the, the fatter they are, the smoother they'll get. The flank area, that area between the hind leg and the belly will, will fill as an animal finishes. Those are the main ones. We can also look at the spread of legs. As an animal gets fatter, they have to spread their legs further. And then finally, dew claws will change depending on the degree of fatness. So all of these have to be combined into one final call on the, the readiness for that animal to go. So what we're looking at is a relatively finished heifer. And this area here is, is, is called the flank. And as an animal deposits fat, getting closer to finish, this flank area actually will begin to drop. It will also become relatively thick when you grab a hold of it, but you can see it visually. Another area that we will look at is over the rib cage. If you think about your hand, you want a finished animal to have the feeling over the back of your hand, not necessarily your fingers. So it's, it's smooth, you can still feel the ribs, but it's relatively smooth versus your fingers where it's definitely a definition between. This is probably one of the more common areas that we look at is uh, tail head fat. Again, as an animal deposits fat, this is one of the pretty predominant areas. And you can see on this heifer that you can actually palpate a fairly large deposit of fat. And you will see this on either side of the heifer. Now on this, being a heifer, this is a very unique and distinguishing characteristic. This is called rope fat, if you will. And it starts below the vaginal area and it will actually look braided like a rope when she is finished. And it has a high correlation to the low choice quality grade. You don't see this in steers, only in heifers. So if, if you've got a heifer that is showing this type of fat deposit, you can be pretty well assured that she's ready. Another very distinguishing characteristic is the brisket fat. Now you can see on this heifer, there's a cantaloupe sized deposit of fat. And that is a very good indication that, you know what, she's getting ready to, to go to harvest. So when they're not finished, this area will be pointy and the skin won't be as extended as it is here. Okay, our next animal is one that's very obviously not finished. Now, it's a steer, granted, but you can certainly see, looking at this animal from the side, especially if you focus on the rib cage and you had a chance to palpate or run your hand over that rib area, it would feel like the your fingers, not the back of your hand, okay? You could actually feel the distinguishing characteristics of each rib. So, good indication that he needs a little more time on feed. Now as we move again to the flank region as before, definitely not down. You can see it's much more pointed as a, an unfinished animal would be. Uh, grabbing a hold of the skin flap in the flank, it's, it's very thin. Uh, you're basically got hide with, with no fat in there at all. So another indicator that this animal's not finished. All right, moving to the tailhead. 
I think it's pretty obvious that there's no fat there. Again, an, another strong indicator that uh, this animal just needs some more time on feed. We're going to move forward and, and go to the brisket area. You see, you see the skin, how much closer it is together. Uh, there's some fat in there, but just not enough. Okay, moving to our third animal, probably one of the better finished animals. This is a steer. We're looking at the tail head fat. Again, very, very prominent. Moving to the flank. Again, we're looking for a flank that's fallen down, if you will. And you can see that this one is a little flatter. It's also, there's not as much fat when that is squeezed together. Going over the rib cage, and this animal would have been smooth as the back of your hand versus your fingers. Brisket, again, maybe not as fat quite as that first heifer we looked at, but definitely a, uh, at least a, uh, a small cantaloupe there in the brisket area. One thing we haven't talked about yet is the width of the animal as it stands as an animal gets fatter it has to hold its legs further apart now this isn't to be confused with muscling because animals that have heavier muscling will also stand wider apart here we're looking at the dew claws the dew claws is an area that will get fat the fat will fill in around these dew claws and and almost the claws will almost begin to sink in and be less visible compared to an animal that's not as well finished all right, now we're going to move to uh, dairy cross animals. And dairy supplies a significant amount of beef into the consumer market. And so we've got a couple of animals that show a very well finished and properly fed dairy cross and one that is something we need to think about doing in a different way. But this is a very well finished Holstein steer. We're going to look at the flank area maybe a little bit tighter as, as he stands there, but there's definitely some fat in there compared to an unfinished animal. Across the rib cage, relatively smooth. Hooks to pins, definitely smooth, especially as we think about what a dairy animal uh, would look like. This steer's been fed very well. Tailhead fat, while it will be less on a dairy cross animal in general, you can see that there is a fair amount here. Here's a good example. Now, Holsteins are not as well muscled. We understand that. And you can see that his legs are not near as far apart as that one that Angus steer that we looked at a little bit earlier. And his dew claws uh, also are, are more pointed and sticking out. Brisket fat, you know, looky there. He's got some really decent brisket fat. And so this is a, a extremely well-finished Holstein steer. Uh, he's at a weight that is desired by the consumer market, not too heavy. So uh, this 4 h -er should be congratulated in, in putting this, uh, this type of animal forward. Now here's a dairy cross animal that is of different type. Now granted it's probably a little less muscular, however you've got to be careful not to confuse muscle and fat. Looking at the tailhead fat, not as well defined. There's some there, but not to the same degree. Flank fat, as I grab a hold of it there, my, my thumb and forefinger are, are pretty close, indicating that there's not a whole lot of fat there. There's some, it's, it has uh, flattened out a little bit, but uh, just an animal that needs a few more days on feed. Across the rib cage, not as visible in terms of seeing that there's ribs showing, but we palpate across those ribs, we can feel it. And here definitely we see a lack of finish. This brisket area, you can see it's mostly all skin. There's a maybe a grapefruit in there if you if you want, but just just very little fat there at all. Looking at the back legs held more together. The dew claws also point out, enveloped by a fat pad, and so just one more indicator that uh, not quite finished. Now this is a different animal than what we've looked at up to this point because this is a Charlie Cross steer that's very well muscled but also properly finished and we'll point out some differences because these type of animals show fat, deposit fat differently than the English breeds uh, which is where your Angus animals fit. 
So we're going to start at the tailhead fat. There's some there, but again, it, it's not as prominent. You think about that Angus steer and Angus heifer that we looked at. It was pooched right out, if you will, and quite evident. Here, about the same as we've seen before. A lot of fat in that flank area. There's a lot of distance between the thumb and forefinger, so uh, indicating a fair amount of fat. Across the ribs, Maybe a little bit less, but look how uh, when you're grabbing there, there's, you're grabbing fat. And so pretty good indication that there, there's enough fat cover over. Now, this is what you'll sometimes not see in continental type breeds is the brisket fat. And, and this steer fits right in well with that. He's got some, but it, it's not as grossly obvious as it was in, in the Angus cattle. And then looking on the back side, just for a minute, and I don't want you to get confused between fat and muscle, but look how much distance there is from the tail out to the side. Just an extremely well-muscled steer. Look how wide he stands in the back. That has to do with muscling as well as, as the degree of fatness. And you can see on this one, especially the one being pointed there, that, that his uh, dew claws are, are enveloped by that fat that's been deposited there.